Hi, 10 Minutes with Tara, and today is Nothing Changes Without Confrontation. I don't know how many of you stand in line and say, hey, confront me. I want to change. No. I don't know how many of you are ready to approach somebody else and confront them because, well, most of us are doing it out of judgment or anger. But the thing is, Unless you confront the issue, the problem, how will it change? You have to become aware of it. I know that I had to, I had to confront my diet because it was affecting my health. It was affecting my mood. It was affecting my sleep. It was affecting my weight. It was affecting my self-esteem. It was affecting my confidence. It had to be addressed. The confrontation was that of um, my clothes weren't fitting well and I wasn't, I, I, was, I wasn't liking myself at all. And that was, there's a deeper confrontation as to like, we can talk about why I was not eating well, but let's confront why. Well, there's the whole, um, the whole thing is like, you don't really know to what extent what you're eating and, and you know, you're eating things that say low fat or whatever, like organic or whatever it is, you know, you think you're consuming something that your body will respond to say, thank you. Now I'm going to become completely healthy. No, there's a lot to be made aware of. We are lied to significantly by the food industry. OMG. Okay. So, but what needs to be confronted is, is an even deeper issue. You know, for me, that, that comfort, for me to change, um, why I was eating, what I was eating, when I was eating and why I didn't know better, all of that need to be confronted. And it all stems from a core, a core issue, a trauma, um, a lie that I agreed with. Confrontation. You've got a marriage that's falling apart and, and you're not communicating anymore the problem most likely is not that your marriage is falling apart. The problem is there is a deep, deep core issue that is causing you to deal with your problems in a way that's very unhealthy. You have two individuals coming into a marriage. They have completely different playbooks and expectations. And you think you're on the same page. Go, Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love you. I love you. Everything's going to be great. No. Nope. There's a whole lifetime, no matter how great your parents were, there are things that need to be dealt with and God is seeking you out because you're seeking him and he's getting you prepared in every way. And all of a sudden you see all these signs, you're bickering, you're, um, you're, you're disagreeing on things. The romance is left, ah, but it is something needs to be confronted. It's not just confronting each other. Like you never, and you always, oh, those are terrible words. Never and always don't say those words. Don't ever, never say those words. But the big confrontation for change is why? Is it your hormones, right? Guys and or girls. Is it the fact that you're spending too much time watching the news? Is it because of idol worship? Is there pride? Is there unforgiveness? These things, when confronted and exposed, brought into the light, is there a secret addiction you have? Everything is forgivable, everything. You bring that addiction into the light, out of the darkness into the light, then there's healing, but things need to be addressed. If there are problems, if there is um, something, it's like an upside down chair, if there's dysfunction, you know, a marriage should be one way, but it's not for some reason. There is something deeper that needs to be addressed. And, and almost all situations, almost all, not all, cause I won't say all or always that kind of thing, but there's always, um, usually there's a hidden sin, a shame an unforgiveness, some sort of a, a wrong pattern of how to deal with issues and gotten from who knows where, from one of the, one of your parents just needs to be brought into the light, confronted. And then you seek out, I got this self-help book. It is amazing. It will help yourself. 
and every self around you. You want to see it? I mean, seriously, it's the best book ever. It'd be called The Bible. You confront the issue of what's keeping you dysfunctional and unhappy and unsecure and judgmental and critical, and you take that to the cleaner, and that is Jesus. He cleanses you with his blood. Let's confront the issue that you're starting off your day not with him. Let's confront the issue. You're expecting to do your day without being charged up by the word of God, and, and you think you might be financially successful. You might, things might look pretty good in your family, but I'm telling you, ultimately, you're missing out on a level of supernatural amazingness that can only be acquired through a relationship with your maker. Confront. Confront the issue and there'll be changes. You have a prodigal. Confront the issue. You know what the issue is with prodigals? They're prodigals. It's not really, really an issue. I mean, they're going to come back. I mean, it's, you're in Christ. They know who Christ is. They walked away. You can't sit there and stare at the door the whole time. You grieve it. You grieve yourself. You ask for, you confess your sin, ask for forgiveness, and let God work that out. But the thing is, unless you confront the pain of the issue, how can things get better? How can they get better? How can anything get better? How can your health get better unless you confront that you're in bad health? Unless you're authentic and transparent? How can your grades get better until you confront, assuming you're a student, you might be listening to this, unless you confront the issue that either you're being lazy or maybe you just have a learning problem or you need a different way of being taught. You must confront it if you want it to get better. And you improvise and overcome. I think that's a military term, and I learned that a long time ago, and I've always loved that. I think that's why I am where I am today. It's like you improvise and overcome. You got a problem? Okay, how are we going to make this work? Improvise and overcome. Confronting the issue. You have a problem with a friend, somebody who you've loved dearly, and you found something out. How do you confront the issue? How do you bring it into light? You know, for me personally, I've had a friend that I knew a bunch of things and I didn't want to betray the person who told me these things. So I would go to that friend and I would say, I, is there anything that you and I need to talk about? Oh no, no, there's nothing. I'm, okay. Next day. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, fine, fine. Everything's great. Oh, good. You know, I just, uh, I feel like, is there anything that we need to discuss? Oh no, 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 no. I mean. That was my way of confronting the issue other than saying point blank saying, dude, I know, I know these things and I just want us to fix them. At the same time, not trying to betray another friend who told me these things and I just wanted to know what the truth was. Nothing changes unless, and it would be behoove the person to say, just let's confront this issue. I've hurt you and I'm sorry. I hate that I hurt you. I, I blame my humanness, my jealousy, my, my um, impatience, my judgment, my pride. It was sick and I hated it. And I'm taking care of it. All I can ask is for you to forgive me. I am human. I think that was the hardest things for my daughters to come to terms with is, is I'm human just because I'm kind of a big personality. I've overcome more than overcame a lot of things. And I've been more than humiliated throughout all these things that um, I've done wrong. And I've been brought more than his beautiful truth where it says, therefore, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I'm a different place now. I'm not sitting there dwelling on all the terrible things I did wrong. But I can tell you what's right as I have a living God who dwells within me. And I live present future. I don't live present fat, past anymore, nor do I want to. Who, what good does that do? But now today, I know I'm kind of a big deal because the biggest deal of all said so. He says you are too. So there's your lesson on confrontation. God bless you and I love you.